Hi guys, Bob from Bob's Barn Workshop today. Uh, I want to show you something that may or may not be obvious to a lot of people, but um, sometimes when you need to replace the end of your extension cord, like this one, uh, ground plug pin got pulled out, doesn't have any equipment ground that way. This is a really nice piece of extension cord, though it's 14-3. So we're just going to get rid of the bad plug. Now the obvious part I was talking about, which again, as I said, may not be obvious to some of us, is that there's the right end and the wrong end of a piece of extension cord to put your male and female plugs on. And that reason being, yeah, see how easy that opens up? That's nice. Is that the order that these prongs are in, which in a plug like this, the ground wire is always green. If you've got it in the vertical position, the hot line is on the right. The wide, which this plug doesn't have a wide, but the wide one would be on the left, which means you would want that to be your white wire. Well, if you look at the end of the extension cord, I'll strip back a little here. I'm not going to need to strip it very much. Shorten them up. Just score that so you don't get into your conductors. These are in a particular order. And to wire your plug, so if you go out and buy a piece of uh, rubber cord to make an extension cord, you'll have to look to decide which is the right end. Now, if you notice on this, I cut this plug off, which it, I figured this would be right. The darker screw, the brass screw, would be your black wire. The green screw, your green wire, and the white wire goes in that one. So that means they all go in straight just like that. And you don't have to twist them around or cross them to get them into your connectors. So that's all that I'm saying here. And it just makes it a heck of a lot easier to get your extension cord put together. This actually, this piece of cord came off in a carpet cleaning machine that we had. We finally ended up ditching it because the suction motor went and the water pump went and I was going to try to fix it and I couldn't find the right parts and I wasn't sure if I could find the right parts and so on and so forth and I thought, eh, time to just give up on it. So, if you're not a real expert at using wire strippers, buy a set like this that has the gauge numbers on here. I know this is 14 so I'm going to strip these a half inch. Oh yeah, like a nice thick wire. I, uh, actually have a musical review that I play in and uh, sometimes the stages just don't have enough outlets. So what I'm going to do with this cord is, is I'm going to put a four gang box on the end of it, sort of make my own heavy duty power strip out of it. Alright, so this is lucky. There's no clamps to worry about. We just uh, loosen these clamps up and you can see on the inside it comes apart, comes open. So we want to open these all up. And if you're using nicely stranded wire you want to make sure your strands are all twisted together tight. Now if you saw me make the uh, generator extension cord, I called this doing the little dance. You kind of got to bend these guys inward so all the conductors are parallel like, like this, like a, and, and be careful when you put them in that they go right in, just like that, all the way in, no bare conductors showing. We'll start to tighten these up, get them in position. This is an old plug. There's a little corrosion on the prongs. I'm going to have to uh, take some emery cloth and clean them up nice and clean so I get good contact. This plug's been laying around the shop a long time just waiting for an extension cord to show up. Okay, so that's simple. Those babies down nice. Try not to stab yourself in the hand when your screwdriver slips. Right. 
that sucked. But he's here Phillips on. I'm not a fan of Phillips for tightening stuff tight. They always seem to want to push out. I think the screwdriver's worn a little bit though too. There we go. Alright. And then, and then, and then. That baby just closes up just like a clamshell. Hoping I can suck it down together. Uh, together. Yeah, that screwdriver tip is worn a bit. And that'll give you a good strain relief on that cable too. These ends have little inserts, but that's not even touch and tight yet, so I'm betting there's a pin or something on this that isn't quite aligned. When I start putting pressure on it, hopefully she'll pull right together. plug from pulling off. All right, let's work on the other end. So, I'm back. I don't want to zoom in too much, but I want you to see what I'm doing too. All right. I just decided I was going to use some leftover uh, outlets that I had around. I went out to the barn and uh, dug up a couple of these. I have a, a bin out there that's basically for uh, leftover electrical parts and I see this is stuck really well must have been good brand of uh, tape anyway we're just gonna slide that a little bit there and peel this guy off alright this guy's already got the ears broken off and what I like it got uh, this one for is because it has the set screws to hold the wires. So because this is an extension cord, I'm going to put the wires daisy chain them between the two outlets. According to code, you can't do that in a house outlet now. This is just for uh, my use, so I again I can't recommend this uh, technique to anybody other than just take it as it is for entertainment. It isn't a uh, guaranteed how-to or anything, you know. So, uh, oh, that's got some crud in there. I got brand new outlets here. I guess I could use those. They're not that expensive. Yeah. All right. Decision made. I guess I'm going to the new ones. All right, brand new ones. I'm not going to hook up a pigtail to these outlets. Well, yes, I am. I'm not going to hook a ground wire to the box, which won't be according to code, but because the grounds will, will be attached to the frame of the outlet, the outlet is therefore going to be screwed with three screws to the lid, and the lid's going to be screwed to the box. Everything's going to be grounded. Uh, I just couldn't find <laughs> a stupid little uh, ground screw, so. If you're doing it in your home, go to Home Depot or your other home centers and make sure you get some green ground screws. And, uh, these older boxes have, the shallow boxes have the threaded, it's been around a while, have the threaded holes for the ground screws. The newer boxes accommodate mounting it flat on wood so they give you a little uh, mountain basically so that the screw doesn't stick out the back and hold the push the box away from the wall especially if you're putting it on a piece of cinder block or something 
Alrighty, so this is an all half inch knockout box. We don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about these little half knockout things for three quarter. And we're gonna twist the tabs and pull the screws out of all of these because we've got new screws that came with the cover. They handily came with that. So we break off these ears and oh something else you might not know. The ears that break off your receptacle are actually washers that you can stack underneath. If you've got a box that's too deep in the wall and you want to bring your outlet out a little bit, you can use these ears when you break them off as washers or spacers. So that's just a little trivia there after doing this for 40 years. Almost 40 years. I started it when I was about 18. Right after the flood of 72 there was lots of Lots of work. Now the drawback of these is I gotta wire them first before I can screw them into the cover because after I get them screwed into the cover I won't be able to tighten these screws. So that guy's gonna get set aside for a minute. We're gonna knock out the plug. Twist that out. Get a nice Romex connector. I don't know of any bad. Well, I don't know if there are bad Romex connectors. There probably are. <sighs> Snug that up. This is a crappy old computer. Terrible, so I don't mind putting this to it. I'm going to tighten this up really well. And you just use a like that to tighten that up. No, that's nice and tight. Alright. I gotta think about how much lead I'm gonna need inside. I got a daisy chain up to two outlets and I want to tie a knot in it. So well maybe I just maybe I just tie wrap it down. Yeah, I'll try that. Okay so I'm just rolling that through, scoring that. Twist it to break it free because <clears throat> you definitely don't want to cut into your conductors and have them bouncing around inside. If you keep working this, it'll inch off and take it to a point where she'll slide off. All right, there you go. Again, this is nice 14 gauge stranded, so it's nice and flexible and nice and heavy. This will carry all the current I need for any of the. Well, nowadays most of the equipment is LED. We used to be, we had 100 amp panels just to run our stupid lights. But nowadays, okay. So we tighten our clamp now. Evenly. You want these to be a good snug fit, but you also don't want to pinch your wire till it shorts. I did that once in one of those metal boxes, like an octagon box that has those tab-like clamps that kind of force it over the edge of the box. I cut the wire. All right. I think what I might do is just put a few uh, tie wraps on that. I could do that. I don't think I'm going to. I'll put the tie wraps on the wire right here. This will just make it large enough that it won't fit out through the hole if it should loosen up somehow. Hopefully this won't interfere with the cover going on. Uh, let me loosen up that wire. Just a minute here. So I can rotate that around and get the head of the other tie wrap on the other end here. Like so. Just kind of make this like a big plug. So she won't pull free. Push on that while you pull on the end. I'm not cutting it yet. All right. I'll put that over. Put it down. 
down there. See, that'll never pull up there. Strain relief. <laughs> I'm going to do a video. I, there's so many videos out there giving you advice on how to ground an ungrounded outlet in the house. And I guess code does allow you to put a ground fault breaker or receptacle in the wall with no equipment ground. And that can be a little sketchy if you ask me. All right, I'm going to go to this guy first, and I'm going to run my green grounds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fancy, I'm going to leave plenty of wire. I'm going to take this and I'm going to snip it at 14 there, and I'm going to go about 3 quarters of an inch, and I'm going to snip it again. Or just cut in, not snip it. And then, and then, and then. Carefully skin it. And peel it off. And then give her a little twist. I got a couple loose strands, but that's all right. It'll be fine. And I like my outlet's facing this way for some reason. We're going to put him right on there. Around the first screw. Take our scrot and drive And. Want. Want now. If you get that under there, like that, I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Strip him about three quarters of an inch. Twist him up. Make a little hooker. Use your tip of your screwdriver to push it back. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing with the, the whites and the blacks, except I'm going to, uh, yeah, maybe I should just strip them so they're, alright, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut these and strip these like I did the other one. I'm not going to put it on camera. Alright, well, uh, while you were away, I got them stripped in the middle, and I stripped it a little over a half inch on each end. So what I'm going to do is... Wrap it around the first screw. Halt, pinch it together nice, nice and tight. And we're gonna take this set screw. Now we want it nice and tight, but we don't want to cut the strands either. Okay. Put this guy over. I think I've got to run this guy underneath. Seems to be the way he wants to go. Now make sure you wrap this wire around the screw the way the screw wants to tighten. That's the other trick. So get your wire bent, push that back so you can get it up and around nice like that. And see, I don't have a lot of bare wire hanging out of the back of the outlet though either. It's almost all behind the screw. Because we a lot of commercial wiring, you use stranded wire and conduit. So, careful not to cut strands. She's buckling a little bit right there, but that's alright. Alright, so, now we take this end, we come over here to the other white. Now see this one has a, a plate type clamp. So I can put that right up. I gotta cut that just a hair shorter. 
actually. Get the plate to swing out, get it up and behind. See, back in the old days, we used to hook up both, like say you had uh, a wire coming in and a wire going out of the box. And you used to hook up the wire here and the wire going out here. Well, that makes the receptacle part of the circuit. So the current all had to travel through these little breakaways. Well, these little breakaways are actually des designed to make either these receptacles switchable or even on separate circuits. They uh, just don't have the current handling capacity. to uh, handle a 20 amp circuit, I don't think. That looks like pretty wimpy. And I always thought that when we wired them that way. And then for, oh my gosh, for a while there they had those receptacles with push-in clips where you just stripped the wires and you shoved them in a little hole and there was a little spring clip in there that caught the wire and that was supposed to make your circuit. Ay, 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 those were a nightmare. But we were commercial electricians and they went together fast and time is money, but they don't allow that anymore. Now you have to pigtail all your wires in a box, and I'll show you that in my upcoming video on how to actually wire a receptacle correctly. I see so many of them out there that I wouldn't do to my home. So that guy's tight. That guy's tight. There's Bill's auto calling. Pause. Well, alrighty then. Made it back from the... I did have to go pick up my car. So where were we? Okay. Grounded, grounded. Now, let me give you a quick explanation when people talk about ground and neutral. Ground is always a green wire. It always attaches to any metal objects that the power powers goes through. And it's the horseshoe bottom plug, which if you look at an extension cord, the ground prong actually is longer, so it makes contact before it makes contact with the hot contacts. Don't let anybody tell you that you can retrofit two prong outlets into the wall and put three prong outlets in and have a safely grounded outlet. Unless there's a separate wire into that box, and it's usually a bare wire in the Romex that is bonded to the box with a screw and out to the receptacle. I've seen a lot of videos out there of people showing some really sp scary stuff of people replacing these. Now, according to code, you can put a ground fault interrupter circuit uh, receptacle in, which will, what a, what a ground fault does is it looks at the current uh, going out and coming back to the outlet and if there's any difference between that not if it's not returning on the neutral that's what blows them so in other words if you've got power coming out of the black wire into your circuit and somehow that circuit is shorted out goes through you goes to a water pipe goes to something else that will blow so I can see where that would be safe how that is uh, that would protect you from getting a shock it will not, however, protect your outlet boxes and make them grounded. So just make that differentiation there. Uh, the only way you can ground your outlets and ground your outlet boxes and have grounded uh, devices plugged into it that are safely grounded is if there's a separate wire to that outlet to that prong going all the way back to your main panel box where the neutral and the ground, now the neutral is white that is just the low voltage part of the circuit the power has to come out on the black wire, go to, goes through your motor or whatever your light and comes back on the, the white wire back to the transformer. Now the transformer center tap winding is grounded to earth ground so that basically is sitting at zero volts and the two legs on that are 120 volts out of phase and how you get your 240 volts to power 240 
motors or something is from the two hot legs instead of having a neutral. All right, uh, class is over. All right, <laughs> I'm back. I went out and got a new roll of tape. I've got them all over the place. I was going to tape these up just in case they should come loose somehow. Uh, you don't have to do this. This is just my preference. Now I don't do this if I'm putting the outlets in a in a box in the wall or anything. And this electrical tape is good stuff. Get good electrical tape. Don't buy the cheap junk from the no-name discount store. You all know who I'm talking about. Buy you some good tape. This is good scotch tape. Lord only knows where some of that other stuff comes from. Or what it's made out of. to sneak down and overlap that bottom joint just a little bit. As I go down here. Alright, about three wraps is plenty. Alright, and if you yank on that and pull on that like crazy, it's going to get all distorted. And if you stretch it too much, then it'll creep off and slip off from the connections anyway. So I'm going to start out. They've supplied four little bolts with these. But uh, they're also 632s. And that's what the normal plastic switch uh, outlet cover in the center of this is. So to hold them in place while I put the bolts in. Now you technically I don't even need the bolts. But seeing this is going to be an extension cord that I'm dragging around a lot and stuff different places and I think I'll uh, put all of them in there. I've got another 12 gauge cord out in the garage that I was using as a generator cable, but I uh, don't like it very much. So I'm thinking I'm going to put a pl plugs on the end of it too. Now this has to screw through the grounding. There's like a little pla uh, metal plate in there. If you can see it, which you can, I'm sure. Gonna back this off a little bit. There's a little metal plate in there, so it bites into the the screw where it gets screwed into your uh, outlet box or whatever. This is going to a nut on the back, so a little bit different arrangement here. Okay, I'm gonna have to hold that nut with something. I should have a nut driver. I got my needle nose. That should make it bite. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to do this to all four. You don't need to watch. All right. So I'm just snugging up the rest of these screws. I had to loosen up the center screws to let the uh, outlets dangle it around a little bit. That's going to be a great addition to my uh, my gear. And I'll see. I, I just uh, kept the wire short so I don't get them pinched in between anything. We will do a meter test after we get this, this final assembly here. These are uh, I'm not sure. These might be eights, number eight screws. I want this this way. Well, I, I wired it for this way, so that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which way these go on, does it? Just 
So, I don't feel a lot of resistance under this tightening it down, so that's a good sign that they're not pinching anything. You can see why I use the smaller box, it's just a little bit more compact, looks a little nicer. Tighten these up really good. I don't want this to shake loose. Alright. Alright. We'll turn the meter on. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Touch the box. She beeps. Touch the hot. Nothing. Touch the neutral. Nothing. Touch the ground. Zero ohms, it says. Which means it's a perfect, perfect ground connection. And that's ground, not neutral. And then we'll test the plug. Okay, so we know that the plug is grounded. Got nothing here, got nothing here. So the hot wire should be this one. Of course, I got to make contact. Nothing there, nothing there. Move it over to the. Nothing there. And we got it. So it's wired perfectly. So uh, let's plug her into the wall. This on AC volts. Most of my circuits down here in my family room basement are uh, that's pretty close to 120 volts, and maybe 119.67. Now, if I read that to earth ground, I should get the same voltage. So there you go. Because the ground, earth ground, is bonded together with the neutral back at my main panel. But that's the only path you should have. Okay guys, that's the right way to do it. Enough lectures for today. Um, 14 gauge extension cord. It's about 25 feet. We'll see you next time. Take care.